is small. Resolutely, Rachel chose to take this as a sign of respect. They were not, after all, on a date. Then she watched him rummage through his pockets and stack the exact change neatly by the ashtray, plus a penny. Embarrassed, she threw down ten dollars to cover tips from the two of them. Out on the street, Frederick began to sing Hate Keeps a Man Alive from Brecht's Thruppany Opera, in German, of course, and Rachel caught herself wishing that the manhole over which he swayed drunkenly might be rigged like a trapdoor in a stage. <laughs> Stars glimmered lazily through the late summer sky as he walked her home. They passed through the student ghetto. Hendrix and Harmonium rang out from above, still, after all these years, like perennials in window boxes. And this was the time of year Rachel fancied she could hear the sounds of trees starting to change. She could smell them like semen. So, he said, looking up at the elegant stonework of her old building, he assessed the chateau facade and the green mansarded roof. You squat in the remains of empire. Yeah, good night, Frederick. It was a pleasure getting to know you. <laughs> oh, well, he said, looking at his feet, brushing back his forelock, attempting modesty, shyness, astonishment, but giving a brief and measly performance as it turned out. I'm flattered you say so, though you know that was only the tip of the iceberg. Good night, Frederick. Yes, quite. Good night. Is it ah uh, so resplendent within? Of course not. It's a student digs, it's a slum. Well, good. That is more my style. 